Okay, this is part 11 of the Blender Game Engine tutorial series that I'm putting together for everyone. And um, I decided to do maybe another 10 or 20 lessons for everyone to help simplify it for you. All right, so the logic bricks really are they're kind of an extension of a programming language. They're just a simplified version of it. And so what we're going to do is we're going to add uh, the equivalent of a variable from a programming language because really what you're saying when you're working with computers you can say maybe I'm moving this cone along through the scene and when it gets to a certain distance or location then I want it to do something else so I have to check that condition at any given time alright so what we'll do is maybe we'll add a uh, let's see we'll just wing this out we'll add a small cube here to the scene gotta give it a color maybe make this one green all right, so we have a little cube in the scene. Move it over here. Be front and center. And uh, we'll just go to the logic bricks and we'll do something with it. I'm not sure exactly what, but we'll go figure something out. Whoops, got to the wrong screen. So we'll go to the logic brick window here. And there it is, it's zoomed out like that. All right, so the first thing we'll do is we'll add just a regular keyboard, right, right arrow key, an AND controller, and a motion controller. And we'll move it, you know, point to, like usual, like this, based on the right arrow. We'll verify that actually works. P, press the right key, so there it goes, it's moving along the green. The green the, notice the that one has its own right arrow key condition on it as well. All right, so, uh, but now what we want to do is maybe I don't want it to move right away. Maybe I want it to uh, delay for a while before it moves, even though I, so I'm kind of checking the state of it. So what I'm going to do is I'll add the equivalent of what we call property. And this is, this is a variable. If, from a programmer's perspective, this is a variable. And we'll call it, I don't know, cube, cube count will be the name of our variable. And so instead of just moving this cube along here like this, I only want to move it, say, when this uh, variable cube count gets to a certain value. All right, so it starts right here. I've started it at zero. That's the d default value for the variable cube count. So what I want to do is for this sensor, the sensors you can think, kind of think of is like when this happens here, do this over here, all right? So we're going to add a different type of sensor called a property sensor. But really it means it's, this, it's one of these variables over here. And it says to evaluate. And what I'm going to try and do, I'm going to evaluate it. So I'm going to say when the value of cube count is equal to a given value, and I'm going to put a value in here, then do something. All right? And what I'm going to do is so, first of all, I've got to put the cube count property in here and say when the, when the value is equal to 50. All right? And then instead of having a motion sensor for starters, I'm going to add a property sensor over here. And then I'll add a motion sensor. This is just to keep it in order. I could have just added the property sensor like this. But instead of the keyboard controlling the motion directly, I'm going to have the keyboard control this property thing right here. And you see I have all these possibilities. Well, I'm going to use the add mode. So that says when I press the right arrow key, I'm going through my controller, it says add something to cube count. All right, so that's our variable or our property cube count. And what I'm going to add is this value and maybe I'll add the value of 10. All right, so really what's happening is it says basically the sensor is when this happens, do this. All right, so when I press the right arrow key, then it's going to add the value of 10 to this variable or property called cube count. So it starts it at zero. So after I press it one time, it's going to become 10 because it adds 10 to it. If I press it another time, it'll become 20. And then eventually it'll become 50. All right, so that's what we're doing with the keyboard. Now this property sensor here, it says when this 
variable or when this property named cube count is equal to 50 because this is what I'm checking in here when it's equal to 50 then I want something else to happen alright so I'm gonna have to put in another connector between so I'll say so when that becomes 50 then make the thing move let's move it in the y direction let me see yeah let's move it in y let's see what happens point two and y like this alright so it, it might be a little confusing right at the outset unless you're a programmer then this probably makes complete sense but don't worry because I'm going to go over this same type of activity over and over again in future lessons until it becomes just second nature to you so if you don't get it the first time around no big deal all right so basically when I run the simulation the the value of that variable called cube count is zero when I press the right arrow key I'm going to run the simulation when I press the right arrow key the cube doesn't move all right but now its value should be equal to 10 cube count should be equal to 10 when I press it again it should be equal to 20 when I press it again it should equal to 30 again 40 and now at 50 it should when it comes equal to 50 on the next press that other routine should activate and move the thing in motion and there it goes so as long as I don't press it again that cube is just going to keep going and going and if I press it again it stops because the value is now equal to 60 and so it doesn't it's not equal to 50 so it's not going to keep moving all right so let's let's just do something here I'm going to stop the simulation okay and so to verify that let's add another sensor let's add this property sensor here and we'll do the exact same thing we'll use this cube count property and I'm going to look for a different value I'll look for the value 70 and I'll run this through this one and I'll add a different motion controller or actuator I should say and then I'll make this negative 0.2 so now what this says is when when the keyboard is pressed no matter what we're always adding 10 to that variable and then when it reaches, when it's equal to 50, we're going to run it in 0.2 in the y direction. And then when it equals 70, then we'll move it in the negative direction like this. All right, so it should be able to, so we sit there, I'll press it. So it's 0, and now I press it once, it's equal to 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. It takes off, I press it once, 60. So 60, now notice that. At 60, it's not equal to 50, so it, it stops moving. But at 70, it starts coming back the other direction. All right? Well, that is kind of should help you get going for this. We'll be using that a lot in a lot of the routines. It's really powerful. It's just the exact same way that I work when I'm programming. I program a lot in many languages, and it's just the same thing. I would actually, in my code, I would say, if cube count is equal to 50, do this. So it's basically the exact same thing, except they give it to you in this powerful, simplified format so you don't have to be a programmer. All right, well, that's it for this lesson, and I'll see you in the next lesson.